With 31 M1 Abrams main battle tanks now headed for Ukraine, there's been a great deal of discussion about how these armored behemoths will fare against the Russian tanks they were originally designed to square off against. Fortunately, this won't be the first time American Abrams will find themselves sighting in on dated Soviet-era armor, and few interactions better reflect this power mismatch than the legendary Battle of 73 Easting of the Persian Gulf War. The Battle of 73 Easting is often referred to as one of the great tank battles of the 20th century, with just 9 M1A1 Abrams tanks, 13 M3A2 Bradley fighting vehicles, and 120 American soldiers squaring off against a much larger force of well-trained Iraqi Republican Guard Tawakalna and 10th Armored Divisions. To make matters worse for the numerically inferior American forces, the Iraqi troops and armor were embedded in a defensive posture, just waiting for the chance to sink their teeth into the as-yet-unproven American tanks. When the fighting began, however, a combination of sound military strategy employed by a then 28-year-old H.R. McMaster and superior military technology laid waste to the Iraqi forces, proving unequivocally that the one-two punch of M1 Abrams main battle tanks and M3A2 Bradley fighting vehicles were more than just effective in the fight. They were downright devastating. Ukraine is not the Gulf War. But before we dive into what happened in the Battle of 73 Easting, we first need to temper our analysis with the appropriate context. The Persian Gulf War was a massive military operation led by the United States and supported by a coalition of some 35 countries. With more than 3,100 M1 tanks in the region, America's gas-guzzling turbine-powered Abrams benefited from the massive logistical might of the U.S and its allies while operating under an airspace dominated by coalition fighters. And that matters all the more when discussing the combat capabilities of the Abrams, which famously requires around 10 gallons of fuel just to start up and burns through between 2 and 10 gallons of fuel per mile depending on how it's being operated. America's M1 Abrams main battle tanks were designed specifically with a European war in mind, namely to counter advanced new tanks being fielded by the Soviet Union by the 1970s. But they were also designed to be operated by the wealthiest country on the planet with a robust global supply chain. In other words, the Abrams is a technologically advanced war machine that works best when used by a country with a mountain of cash to burn and the air superiority required to maintain hardy supply lines. Ukraine has neither the cash nor the air superiority to leverage the Abrams the same way America might, but the technological edge provided by the venerable American armor might still be enough to help the embattled Ukrainian forces lay waste to the dated Russian tanks that are headed for the field today. The Mighty M1 Abrams Four decades after entering service, America's M1 Abrams main battle tanks have stayed relevant thanks to a steady stream of upgrades and improvements incorporated over the years. Today's latest Abrams, the M1A2 SEPV-3, is among the most advanced and capable armored systems on the planet, equipped with an M256120 mm smoothbore cannon with an M240 machine gun mounted coaxially alongside it and another 12.7 mm machine gun operated via the common remotely operated weapon system, CROWS, to boot. It finds its targets using forward-looking infrared, IFLIR, optics and carries an electronic warfare system along with a variety of both active and passive defensive measures. But advanced as today's newest Abrams may be, even the American tanks leveraged in 1991's Gulf War were technologically miles ahead of the Soviet-era T-72s and T-62s operated by the Iraqi military. And, more than a year into Russia's invasion of Ukraine, these are the same tanks being operated in large numbers by Russian forces today. As such, the Battle of 73 Easting, which saw a small force of American Abrams and Bradleys square off against a numerically superior and dug-in Iraqi unit, can give us some interesting insight into just how the Abrams compares to Russian armor in the field. Contending with an American-trained Iraqi commander. On 26 February 1991, Captain H.R. McMaster's Eagle Troops, comprised of 9 M1A1 Abrams tanks, 12 M3A2 Bradley fighting vehicles, and 120 infantry troops were ordered to advance eastward toward embedded Iraqi positions. 
While they would normally be aided by advancing scout helicopters and air support provided by tank-busting aircraft like A-10 Thunderbolt IIs, a massive sandstorm in the area not only drastically limited visibility, but it left American air power grounded. McMaster's orders were clear. Advance as far as 67 Easting, or the 67th kilometer longitude east of the Coalition Fosses campaign map centerline, in an effort to identify Iraqi defensive positions without being drawn into a direct engagement. Once McMaster's Eagle Troop found Iraqi armor, they were to report their position and wait for the full might of heavy reinforcements to close in from their rear. Eagle Troop engages. Eagle Troop pressed slowly into the raging sandstorm with its 13 Bradleys leading the way, peering through their infrared sights, and McMaster's 9 Abrams following closely behind. Before long, they came across an Iraqi scout position who promptly surrendered, but not before giving the Iraqi forces notice of the American advance. As Eagle Troop pressed on, they spotted two Iraqi BMPs scouting their position, accompanied by three tanks. Before the Iraqi armor had an opportunity to react, one of Eagle Troop's Bradleys halted position and opened fire with a BGM-71 tow missile, hitting the southernmost tank. Within seconds, the same Bradley fired a second tow missile, hitting the second tank, before ripping into the third with its 25mm M242 Bushmaster chain gun.